Go give another round of applause for our work here, team. Oh, man, you know what? Happy Father's Day, y'all. I tell you something, since I became a dad, I think I'm just emotional. What is going on with the world? But I have reasons to be. I tell you what, I don't know if you guys know this, but our, uh, our worship leader, Raquel, uh, she was in the emergency room just the other day, oh my goodness. and she wasn't able to walk. <laughs> As you can see, uh, she came into the wheelchair, but she wanted to make sure that she was here with you guys because she wanted to be with you. So I just wanted to uh, just say thank you guys for being here. We give a round of applause for that. <laughs> you know what? She loves you guys so much. And not only did she come, but she decided to bring a bag full of goodies. So I, I, hello, how you doing? Um, if you're a your dad or in any way you have been able to bless anyone. Hold on, I put this button. Hold on. See, I got over, over going and then I'm going to do this. Hold on. Let's see. But yeah, I was, uh, we, we, made you, we made you ladies a uh, t-shirt. So I was like, well, we can't just like have ladies have a t-shirt. <laughs> We got to have a t-shirt for the guys, so we got t-shirts for you guys. Um, it's not a thing. This is no, it is. I can only do it so fast, you know what I mean? I don't know what this is. But um, again, happy Father's Day. The father of one who is right with God will have much joy. He who has a wise son will be glad in him. Amen? Amen. But like I was saying, she loved your father so much that she bring a bag full of shirts to give to you guys. And then if you guys uh, go get these shirts, we got some Slim Jims for you too. Woo! Yeah, I was like, I don't know if the guys want to have anything. I don't know if I knew if I sat there long enough, you're going to be like, somebody else needs a Slim Jim. Hey, we like so, Slim Jims so, hey, too. You know, I like it. Not the sketches we have at all. Somebody left the whole box of Slim Jim. Just say that. No, that's awesome. I love it. I love it. Oh, well, you know, welcome to New Life in Christ Church, where every day is a good day to do life together. Amen? Amen. Uh, Father's Day, Mother's Day. I, this is a pretty good turnout for Father's Day. I know a bunch of fathers want to go camping and stuff and barbecuing, but you know what? Uh, it's nothing like coming in here and worshiping the Lord. Amen? Amen. Uh, we feel like a big pivotal part of worshiping the Lord is uh, knowing what our neighbor is doing. Amen. So, Norma, uh, we are just thankful to the Lord that um, man, she was in a car accident two weeks ago. But through the ordeal, she's doing good. She actually was able to join us at Lakeside, and the Lord gave her a new car. So, just yeah. 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 I mean, I, I, I don't know if any of you guys were able to, uh, well, I know who was able <laughs> to join us on um, Thursday night, but I mean, like, I, I don't know if this is just the Duran man, but look, my son's already getting patted down. <laughs> you know, I just said, I was like, I swear, like, I told him to leave it in the car. You know, I told him, I told him, I was like, son, don't bring that in here, we're going to get in trouble. No, but for all those who did join us at Lakeside, it was such a blessed time. Yes, I mean, from the start to the beginning, Look, like, uh, I learned something. You should eat dessert before you eat food. That makes sense. <laughs> I like that. That's a good way to do it. But I mean, for, for all you guys, that day, you guys really just made that day such a blessing. I mean, and, and you know what? It was a beautiful day. I mean, it did end up raining a little bit later, but that was just fun loading up the car in the rain, right? Like, that was just like a way to go. Look at this daddy right here. Look at that one. Oh, man. I, I just, I'll tell you what. This church is just, is just blessed. Look at all these kids having a good time. And, then, and there's Norma again right there who was able to join us that day. But, I mean, it was just such a wonderful time. And we're hoping to do more things like that in the future. If it's not at Lakeside, man, maybe we just hang out right here in the courtyard and yes. just have a class, right? Yes. You know, we don't need rides. We just need each other to have a Amen. good time and make some good memories. So this, thank you guys all for coming. We had a wonderful time. Um, join us 6 p.m. on Wednesdays for worship. I mean, not only do you get fed the word of the Lord and we get to worship him in song but after we go downstairs for a fellowship meal which tends to be wonderful uh, sometimes I cook so it's not as wonderful but when everybody <laughs> else cooks it's amazing right um, to get into some prayer requests talk about an answer to prayer like the first prayer request we were going to ask you guys to pray for is that we get to see our sister Raquel soon and God didn't even let me get there yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was just like, 
know the mic, I'm just gonna go get ahead of you really quick. And just, I'm just gonna show somebody a tangible experience because it's something about God when he's just able to deliver before we even ask him. Yes. Yeah. But there's something even more important about asking. Yeah. You know, like, I, I don't know about you guys, but I have a tough time praying for myself sometimes. I come up every Sunday and I pray for so many people, but, you know, like, I, I got to be honest, like, I forget in my own walk as your pastor, and I'm being honest with you guys, to pray for myself to just be with the Lord. And I want to encourage you guys, if you're having that struggle, to go ahead and do it because he wants to do life with you. He wants to be with you. And he wants to pray with you while you pray. So that, that, that and it's, just, it's just wonderful to have you, Raquel. Thank you guys for just making my day. And, and also, we're, we're still continuing to uh, lift up our sister, Christine Ramos, who's still in severe pain. But we know she joins us online when she can. I mean, she might even watch it right now. If you watch this, we love you. We love you. But, but you know, it's, it's just one of those things where we, 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 we feel hurt when you feel hurt because we're one body. Yeah. Right? We, 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 we're united in Christ, and, and then we have this thing where we're connected by something that is supernatural, right? I, I could look out to the crowd, and I know if it wasn't for Jesus, we probably wouldn't know each other, but here we are, not only knowing each other, but feeling what each other are going through, and that's pretty pretty amazing. So, today we're praying for you, sister. We're also praying for Gilbert as he's getting ready for a doctor's visit on the 22nd. Uh, we're just praying that in that doctor's appointment that, that they are able to find a conclusion to help him with his rotator cuff muscle. And speaking of uh, prayers and here, here's here's Rob right here. He was uh, oh, a yeah, uh, yeah. you know I wish if I said here's Pastor Duran and they applaud. That's it, here's Rob. It's because he's handsome, Rob. That's, that's why they applaud. <laughs> that's an inside joke. But Rob, he, he has uh, some trouble with his vision, so they ran a bunch of tests, and, and we're praying that those tests come back good, church. Yes. Because we yes. want the best for our brother, yes, and you know, I mean, we're praying for you, Rob. As well as um, this guy, phenomenal arbitrator, right? I mean, he came up there and he was able to speak the word of God and bless us with the message. And he, and he gave us the okay. We've been praying for him, but he wanted to let us know exactly what we're praying for. Because there's something about being intentional with our prayers. And he has been diagnosed with two melanomas on his spine. And he's undergoing chemo. And that's our brother Rick Nessis right here. Chaplain Rick Nessis. And he, and he asked that we pray for him, but his faith is as strong as it ever was. Amen. And then that's a testimony to being a man of God. Also, we're praying for this guy, our brother Martin. You probably noticed he wasn't here because he makes sure and, he's, and he says hi to all of you, but he, he's not feeling well and he got the headache. So we want to lift him up and make sure he's in our prayers as well as our brother Nick, we haven't seen him in a while. And as one of those things, we want to continue to pray for him and make sure he knows that we love him. And Jenna, uh, Hope's friend, uh, also our friend, right? We, we developed a friendship while praying for her. She's still suffering through a lot while going through her treatments for cancer. Right? I, I mean, there's just so many things going on. I still have this one because I haven't gotten an update. How is uh, Isabella doing? She's doing very good. Oh, see, there's another answer to prayer. Oh, man, praise God. You know, that's, just, that's phenomenal. I also like looking at that pretty little smile. I'm just like, I'm going with that, you know what I mean? But um, you guys can also lift up uh, my family. My grandma lost her sister the other day, and uh, we're under, the services are going to be in uh, two weeks. So we're lifting them up, as well as my auntie as she continues to recover after going to her visit to the emergency room. So I know that's a lot of prayers, but we got a guy that's bigger than all those things. Sister T. I have two prayers. The other one is for my granddaughter Santana. She has a she has bad skies in her eyes, uh -huh. and these ones are like really really big. Oh my God. So we don't know if they're gonna do laser or what they're gonna do. I'm just praying that they just go away. Um, the other one is just in general for my whole family because we're going through a lot with Noah and for us. Okay, so good. Give me a fight. Forget anything, but y'all help me out because I know the Lord's going to bless us. So we got to all bow our heads and open our hearts, and we're going to we're going to pray for all these endeavors, as well as healing for our sister Raquel. Uh, Lord Jesus, Father God of heaven and earth, Lord, we come to you today on behalf of our brothers and sisters 
who need you so much. We all need you so much, but we're asking that you come and intervene in a mighty way in all these individuals' lives. Lord, we pray for our sister Raquel, who three days ago, seems like forever ago, she wasn't able to walk, Lord, because of the pain in her knees, Lord. We pray that that pain be removed from her, Lord. Lord, that she is able to walk, that she is able to join in on all the activities that are going on around her, Lord. Lord, that she knows and that she has peace in you, Lord, and comfort in you, and strength in you, Lord. Lord, speaking of pain, we pray for Christine, who is going through back pain still, Lord. Lord, relieve that pain, relieve that tension, Lord, be with her, touch her right where she's at, Lord. Lord, we, we pray as Gilbert walks into the doctor's office on the 22nd, that, that, that the doctor is able to give him a remedy, give him a diagnosis that is able to help him feel better with his shoulder, Lord, because we need him to be able to do all the things he needs to do as a father and as a Lord, we pray for our brother Rob, who, who's waiting in anticipation to see what the test results show, Lord. But in that time, Lord, I, I pray that you give him a peace that passes understanding, Lord. <coughs> that he knows he can hand over all his situation over to you, Lord, because you are God and you are good always and always you are good, Lord. Lord, we, we, we hand over our brother Rick to you, Lord. What an outstanding testimony that he could walk with such a sure faith because his hope is in you and you alone. And we, we just want to be with him during this season, Lord, because you are with him. Lord, we also want to lift up Jenna through these, through these treatments, Lord. Lord, Lord, we want to uh, lift up Nick as we haven't been able to see him in so long, Lord. Lord, that Martin starts to feel better sooner rather than later. Amen. Lord, we pray for Noah, this young man who is facing time of incarceration, Lord. Lord, that we pray in this time he, he grows closer in a relationship to you. We, we, we thank you for Isabella Rose, Lord, that she is doing so much better. But now we lift up another little girl, Santana, Lord, that, that the styes just, just go away, Lord. That whether it be through your providential power, through surgery, or through the doctor's or if it's just a miraculous miracle, and you just take them from her, Lord. We just we just pray for her in this little in this moment, Lord. Lord, and for Tina's family in a whole, Lord, we just, we just lift them up to you, Lord. We we just can't wait to see them and be with them again, Lord. And Lord, for all those unspoken prayers, Lord, I, I know that there's some people right now that are going through a Father's Day for the first time without a father because you took him home. Or that it's been a Father's Day that whenever it comes around, it's, it's a hard one because their father is no longer around. Lord, or, or maybe it's a father who has lost a son or a daughter. Lord, or maybe it's a father who hasn't, hasn't become a father yet or may not be able to be a father. Lord, there, there are so many things that are going on that you know. But we, we, we bring it all to you, Lord, and to your altar, to your throne, Lord, because you are king and you are the Lord of lords. Lord, we give this time over to you. We love you. We praise all in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, just a couple more announcements. Before we do it. First touch, the first time here, please fill this out. Feel free to flip it over. If you have a prayer request, we'll love to pray for you. Please turn off your cell phones or put it on silent. That would be amazing and greatly appreciated. And now during this time, the hello, how you doing? Hey, say hello to each other. Say hi to each other. See how each other are doing. And for you father um, that, that uh, want to come see me, or actually come see Gabe, because he's, uh, he's the one with the bag of shirts. We want to bless you guys with a gift. Thank you guys. See you in 10. <laughs>
difficult things to do is to be a Christian after you become one. Jesus likens it to carrying a cross and throughout the day, nailing our self-centered impulses to it. It takes discipline. One of those disciplines is gathering together like this. Another one is praying, communicating with our God throughout the day. Yet another is taking money off the top and giving it back to the Lord. Let's pray. Oh, great God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, accept this sacrifice that we're making right now. We can't buy your love, but we sure can express our love by offering you this gift. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.
I was left alone. From where have these come? Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up my hand to the nations and raise my signal to the peoples, and they shall bring your sons in their arms, and your daughters shall be carried on their shoulders. Kings shall be your foster fathers, and their queens and your and their queens your nursing mothers. With their faces to the ground, they shall bow down to you and lick the dust off of your feet. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Those who wait for me shall not be put to shame. Can the prey be taken from the mighty, or the captives of a tyrant be rescued? For thus says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken, and the prey of the tyrant be rescued. For I will contend with those who contend with you, and I will save your children. I will make your oppressors eat their own flesh, and they shall be drunk with their own blood as with wine. Then all, fl all flesh shall know that I am the Lord, your Savior, and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Yes. Can you give an ask for Oh, can we give another round of applause? That was a long read, right? Yeah. He's going to see if he can figure this out. He's going to try to figure out this Bluetooth for me really quick. As he does that, um, I just want to just thank you guys all for being here today. I know that there's a lot going on in your lives. Like, I know there's a lot of people that might want to be at a barbecue right now, right? <laughs> but maybe out to church, you know what I mean? But we're going to Danny Ray's. I don't know if you've been there. It's amazing. But we've been in this series called, in Isaiah, and we, and we themed it. Rebuke, reproof, reproof, and restore. And last week we were blessed by our pastor Mike, where he, he blessed us by what did he do? He, he, he proclaimed salvation to us once again. And it's one of those things, sometimes we get a little worried. We're like, hey, is, is the gospel message going to get old? And I, and I pray not, church. I pray I think every day we should be rejoicing in the fact that there is such good news as what the Lord has given us. Amen? Amen. I mean, here he is always just willing to, like, what did Jack say? He said it's one of the easiest things to do, but for some reason, all we ever do is get in, each other, get in our own way. We, we don't want to do it because the truth of it is scary. Like, right, like, it is scary to surrender. I don't know about you guys, but I, 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 in my life and in my walk, when, when I, I get that little inkling that you have to surrender or to say, I, I give it all to someone else, it, it, it scares me. But like, thanks be to God that we have a Father in heaven who says, trust me. Trust me, and I'll give it all to you. So, so last week, like I said, Pastor Mike, he, he had the proclamation of salvation, right? And, and this week, as we're getting into that, that latter stage of chapter 49, I, I titled today's message, Written on His Palms. And then, and as I was uh, meditating and praying on it, I, I, was, I, I went to Isaiah 49, 16, and I read that, and it said, see, I have written your name on my palms. And I just kept thinking, I was like, well, what, what does that mean? He's written his name or our name on his palms. And, and I don't know about you guys, but I got a couple tattoos. But, but, but like, it was, it, was, it was one of those things is, He's saying, like, every time I look at my hands, like, I remember somebody. We probably got a tattoo of a loved one maybe somewhere. He's saying, he's saying you are forever etched in my skin. I, I know where you've been. I know where you will go. And I love you so much. And, like, another way you would think about it is not, not only is our names written on his palms, but our names are written in his heart. Amen. And then I, then I, thought, I was thinking of this, this hymn. Right? And, it, and it's called Before the throne of God above. And I don't know if you guys ever really look at our bulletins, but if you look at the bulletin and you look at the, the middle part, there's actually the lyrics of this hymnal. Yeah, I know some of you guys ain't singers. I don't sing, but if you guys would actually stand up and we're going we're gonna to play this song. That's what they were doing, was they were getting this uh, theme to work for me. If we're going to listen to this hymnal, some of you might just want to meditate on it and listen to it. That's cool. But I feel like 
the, 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 the hymn or this song um, gets us to set the stage for what we're about to get into today. So if I could get you guys to stand. And like I said, you got the lyrics in your hands, so feel free to go ahead and uh, yeah, feel free to read it off that or it'll be right behind me on the screen. And I'll get away from the mic so you guys don't hear me sing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come stand with my sister T. God knows what you see. I'll sing Jesus. <laughs> For the throne of God above, I have a strong and perfect plea. Great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and sweets for me. My name is graven on his hands. My name is written on his heart. Tongue can bend me, says depart. No tongue can bend me, says depart. When Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within. Would I look and see him there who made an end to all my sin? Because the sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God the just is satisfied to look on him and avoid me. To look on him. But this perfect God says, I still love you so much. Yes. I still love you so much and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm holding you. Holding you in my hands. Right? And we start off in our text where the Lord says, right? It says, thus says the Lord. Before I get again, I'm getting all excited. Let's pray really quick. Uh, Lord Jesus, this time is yours. Lord, help me get out of your way. Speak through me, Lord. Help us to not only hear what you have to say, Lord, but to do what you tell us to do, Lord. In your name, Jesus, amen. Amen. Thus says the Lord, in a time of favor, I have answered you. In a day of salvation, I have helped you. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people. 
to establish the land, to apportion the desolate heritage. Uh, and in a time of favor, I have answered you. And, and it's one of those things where I hear his father today. And, and I'm like, what am I going to do for Father's Day? Because, you know, I, I tell you what, it, it is a mixture of emotions. And I was telling you earlier, I, I lost my pops when I was about 24 years old. You, you know, and that, that was hard. But I was blessed with, with, with a stepdad who, who wanted to step in. I, I, I know for a fact my sister's having it hard because, you know, she, she lost her dad this, this year. You know, and then there's, there's young people that, that, that you, you, you want to console and you want to talk to and you want to tell them that it's going to be okay. But, you know, they're seeing kids and other, and other siblings and cousins. They're playing with their fathers and their dad is no longer there. And as a pastor, my, my heart breaks. You know, and I'm like, well, I, maybe I should get out of my sand because Isaiah Zero, he doesn't, he doesn't have a way of like, you know, he kind of puts salt in the moon sometimes. We're just being honest. <laughs> But, but, like, but here, I, I, all I can do is when I read it is I just hear these little tidbits of God's word where he's just reminding us, yeah, maybe you don't feel so great today, but I am still great and I am with you. Maybe, maybe this time doesn't seem so favorable at the moment, but you know what? It, I, I am with you in this time. And because I am with you in this time, like, I, you, you will have a good time, I guess you could say. I'm all about having a good time. You? I, 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 it's in Psalm 69, 13, what it says, But as for me, my prayer is to you at the right time, O Lord. Answer me with your saving truth and your great loving kindness, O God. It, it is one of those things is God will answer you. But sometimes the answer is not what we're expecting, if we're going to be honest. But I love it that he's a God of truth. And he's going to tell you the truth. You know, some, some people are celebrating Father's Day right now, and, and they're not with their families. That's a sad, that's a sad time. Right? Like, but, like, I was watching this meme, and it was kind of hilarious, because it was like, I guess for Father's Day, you know, some fathers, all they want to do is go play around the golf. They're like, so father, for uh, 364 days out of the year, you know, I'm going to go and play golf. But I heard another meme was where uh, the dad walks in, and he's just like, well, I guess I'll take a 30-minute break, but i got to get back to work because I want to support my family. I mean, there's, 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 a, there's a plethora of different things going on in all your guys' lives, and I'm trying to focus on what's going to be the most beneficial. So I wanted to kind of start with this text to you. In 2 Corinthians 6, 1 through 2, to kind of encourage you. We are working together with God. We ask you from our hearts not to receive God's loving favor and then waste it. The holy writings say, I heard you at the right time. I helped you on that day to be saved from the punishment of sin. Now is the right time. See, now is the day to be saved. We don't have that luxury of knowing what tomorrow has to bring for us, church. Is what I'm saying. I, I, the mor mortality really sinks into me on Father's Day. I, I'm sorry. I, 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 I want to go ahead. I want to be just, like, you know, just all this excited and stuff. I mean, I am excited. But you know what I said? It comes with a mix of emotions because it reminds me of the mortality because, like I said, one thing about celebrating Mother's Day and not celebrating Father's Day is, you know, I, you got to count your blessings those times you have with your mother and those times you have with your father. Because there's a lot of people that no longer have their mother or their father. And, 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 and then we come in and, and we got to get reminded of, well, we all got a heavenly father. We all got a father in heaven. We just sang a song that in the father's house. Well, I love that song. That good, good choice. Whoever picked that up. The calendar, Chanel, whoever, whoever picked it. In the father's house. In the father's house, it, it, it doesn't matter what your background, what, where you come from. You should be able to come in and, be, and know that, hey, I have a father who loves me. Like I said, so that, 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 that's the tough one. Sometimes... Sometimes we, we, we were let down by that who we trusted so much by. Now, I was talking about tattoos, like, right? I, I, I know somebody that have a tattoo of their family, but then they're throwing their life away while, while, while looking right at that tattoo. Because men fail, but God never fails, church. God never fails. And God is the one we're going to focus on because we are written on whose palms? On his palms. 
And you know, and it starts off by something that we should get excited by. Right? He's talking about to the prisoners, I'm saying, come out. And to all those who are in darkness, I'm saying, appear. And then you, I'm going to get you to those pastures. And if you guys know our statement, right, our mission statement, our mission verse, it comes right out of Scripture, Luke 4.18, where it says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me. He has put his hand on me to preach the good news to the poor people. He has sent me to heal those with a sad heart. He has sent me to tell those who are being held that they can go free. I, I, mean, I mean, like, when I hear those kind of passages, it just reminds me, it's like, I'm in the right spot. I'm in the right place. I'm in the right time. And I know what I need to tell you guys is I need to tell you guys right now because maybe you don't know because I don't know if you guys remember a couple weeks back where he was saying not only is, well, are our names written on his palms, but he says he's, he's holding on to us with his strength, with the strong right arm, strong right hand. Like, I, I mean, you guys saw me like uh, during the hell how you doing? My son wasn't having none of that right now. And I was trying to hold him and console him. And, and I, I can't help but I was like, man, what an illustration, because I tell you what, I feel like kicking and screaming all the time when God's trying to hold me where he needs me to be. Like, here I am asking God, hold me, and then when he's holding me, I'm like, put me down, I want to do something else. <laughs> like, right, like, uh, it's one of those things, God, tell me what you want to do, and then you have five or six other people come and tell you, hey, man, you shouldn't do this. You're like, God, just tell me what I need to do. And then, and then you didn't hear this to your brother. You didn't hear this to your sister. And you end up doing what you wanted to anyway. Because we're like, we're like my son. And then we're like, you're just kicking and screaming. Well, God is holding us. But he's saying, I'm never, I'm never going to forget you. I'm always going to hold you. I'm always going to look out for what's best for you. Why? Because I know you're hungry. I know you are thirsty. And we, we, I don't know if you guys know hunger and thirst. You know, because I, I gotta be honest, like I've been thirsty and I've been hungry, but I've never been to that point, like what, what, what he's speaking to in this text in verse 10 of Isaiah. Right? When, he, when he's speaking to, when he's saying, like, they shall not hunger or thirst. Neither the scorching wind nor sun shall strike them. He, he is trying to tell us, like, when they're in their most thirstiest, when they're in their most hungriest, when, when they're burning, he's saying, I'll have pity on them and I will eat them. He's like, no, because we all at one point are going to be at that point where we're just ready to throw in the towel. Amen? Amen. I mean, maybe some of you guys want to throw in a towel like five, ten times this morning. I tell you what, like I, like I said, maybe it's because I'm a dad now, but I get a little more. But when I saw my sister Raquel roll up, sorry, I hate to say it that way, but you, but you know what I mean. <laughs> when we saw her roll in, right, like I, but I couldn't help but just be overwhelmed with emotions where I, I, I wanted to tear up because here I was complaining about little things, and here she couldn't walk and she still made it to church. Amen. Amen. Those, those, those are just some things that, like, I'm sure right now she is in a season where she's like, I'm, I'm tired. And yet she's leaning not on her own understanding, but she's just leaning on God, and he is giving her the strength. Yes. Yes. I mean, I couldn't help but just be reminded of, what, Psalm 23. We've all heard this song. We've oh, been to yes. a funeral, most likely, right? Right, Psalm 23. We're going to read the first four verses. And I'm starting with one. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I will have everything I need. Yes. He lets me rest in fields of green grass. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He makes me strong again. Yes. He leads me in the way of living right with himself, yes. which brings honor to his name. Yes, even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not be afraid of anything because you are with me. You have a walking stick with which to guide and one with which to help these comfort me. And I always get reminded of this scripture because it was preached to me is that Man, how many times have we been scared to walk down that valley? How many times have we been scared to walk through that day? Because we're just like, man, if I, if I, if I go, I'm, something bad's going to happen. And I love that because I get reminded of with Psalm 23 that God is just, he's that father figure that says, just take me, take me by the hand, son. Yeah. Take me by the hand, daughter. Like, I, I, I'm, we're going to go through this valley together. You, you, we're going to do it together. God wants to do it with you. Yes. If it's in your relationship, if it's in your own stubbornness, if it's in, if it's in whatever's going on, right? Like he says, 
this just let me hold you by the hand and we'll go together. Son, daughter, he said, because I know you're hungry. I know you're thirsty. I mean, in Revelation, he reminds us that one day they will never be hungry or thirsty again. In Revelation 7, verses 16 to 17, it says, They will never be hungry or thirsty again. The sun of, or any burning heat will not shine down on them. For the Lamb who is in the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to the wells of water of life. I, I, I mean, I, I don't know if we can like, describe what a water of life is, but I like a deep rock. I, like, I got the deep rock uh, little dispenser at my house. And I tell you what, like, I, I love, like, after mowing the grass or something, going to get in a nice cold drink of water. And I, that, that's not even close to what God's talking about right now. Yeah. Like, I mean, like I said, I, you probably, maybe, maybe some of you guys, I know my brother, no way, he's a, he's a marathon runner, right? So I'm, I'm at the end, he probably just wants a drink of water. And he's talking like, oh, that was the best drink of water or whatever it may be. But, and like, God is still saying, you can't even fathom the drink I'm offering to you guys right now. But in this time, just remember, you are written in my palm. You, I, every time I look down at my hands, I know what they have created. And I'm like, Lord, you still love me? Right? Like, you, you know what you created? You still like this guy? Now that's a trip. But he's saying, yes, I do. God knows our heart. God knows our motives. He knows why we do what we do. And yet he still loves us. That, 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 that is something to say a hallelujah to. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah? Hallelujah. <laughs> See how I'm fishing for that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're not only fishers of men, we're fishers of compliments. I'm sure. But then he gets into <clears throat> verse 11. Right now it says, And I will make all my mountains a road, and my highways shall be raised up. Behold, these shall come from afar. Behold, these from the north and from the west, and these from the land of Zion. He said, all the world is going to know who I am. All the world's going to know who I am because of what I'm doing for you. We should hope that all of Lakewood knows who God is because of what he's doing in this little church. Yes. And then hopefully all of Colorado knows who God is because because why not? Because, I mean, yes, like we, we we give you guys some shirts is because while you're wearing this shirt, I hope that you're showing your neighbor a new life in Christ. Amen. Amen. Right? I don't know. I, like I was telling you guys a couple weeks ago, I don't know if it was on Wednesday or Sunday, but I said, when I'm wearing a new life in Christ shirt, I pay a little bit more. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like all of a sudden, like, I, 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 I rem I'm reminded that I'm a pastor. And I, and I can't be getting out of the car and start fights. You know? I, I mean, I don't start them. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. <laughs> but, but, but right, there's something about knowing that, that, that somebody's looking at you and that, that you, you're to behave. I mean, it is one of those things that God has really been putting in my heart because there's a lot of things going on in this neighborhood alone where we may sometimes seem unreasonable because we're saying do this or do that, but all we're trying to do is set a standard because we think that it would be better for us to have standards. It's okay to, Jack jokes around and says, hey, we have a ghetto church. We may have a ghetto church, but we're going to be the best ghetto church in Lakewood. Amen. You know what I mean? Because we, I, I know you guys that have more to offer than anybody else. We are, we are, it's okay to be ghetto, but it's okay to be good at being ghetto. That's all right. Because God loves us. God loves me. God loves you. And we can sing for joy. O oh, heavens and exalt, O oh, earth, break forth, O oh, mountains, into singing. Like, I was just joking because I, I don't like singing. I'm just joking to you. I want to sit by Tina because I was like, but what they would have been saying is like, man, you almost get this overwhelming feeling like, I just want to sing. I want to shout. I want to just let the whole world know is that, like, man, God is good. Yes. And I don't know if you have the song from the rooftops, but we should be wanting to shout from the rooftops of what God is doing in our lives. Amen. Yes. Feel that yes. Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Because he says, for the Lord has comforted his people, and he will have compassion on his afflicted. He will he'll comfort us. Yes. And he will have compassion on us. Yes. But for us to likewise do that for someone else. Right? I mean, if we decide that we're just going to do it for our own reasons, for our own glory, or for any other thing 
other than to glorify God, then we have the wrong heart motive. Right. And I, God, God's real, real clear about making sure your heart's in the right place, where, where, where your motives are right. Because in Scripture, what it says, it says, the heart is the most deceitful thing out of all. Like, like it will lie to us. Like, we could justify our feelings. Like, and I get it, because I've justified how I feel and did something that I shouldn't have done. That's just human nature. But God is saying, no, like, I, I want you guys to worship me in spirit and truth. I want you guys to know the truth. And you guys got to be who I tell you you got to be, because if you love me, you what? You'll obey me. Amen. You know, getting back into our text, I get, I get excited, right? I get out like, my, my niece tells me, I, I go and chase these bunnies. And I was like, well, who opened up the cages? You know what I mean? Like, why did you let them free? I'm over running around trying to catch them. <laughs> but going to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 4. You guys are wondering where that other one was. Uh, I don't know. I was kidding. That was 13. <laughs> that was in Isaiah chapter 13, or chapter 49 13. Uh, we give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is our Father who shows us loving kindness and our God who gives us comfort. He gives us comfort in all our troubles. Then we can comfort others, other people who have the same troubles. We give the same kind of comfort God gives us as we have suffered much for Christ and have shared his, in his pain. We also share his great comfort. And I love that. Now that you know what it's like to go through a certain thing, now you can use that to help somebody else through what they're going through. Thank you. Thank you. As you grow in Christ, I hope you're helping somebody else grow in Christ. God always tells us it's never enough to just be like, oh, well, now that you know everything you need to know, just let everybody else fall by the wayside. Now, now that you've learned all that you can learn, don't teach nobody. He actually says the opposite. He says, if you, if you know better, tell someone. Yeah. Yeah. Like if, if, if you've learned the hard way, try to help somebody before they learn the hard way. Because I guarantee you, they'll be blessed by it. They may not hear you. And I understand that argument. It's like, well, I told him over and over not to do that. And then he goes and does it. But he'll be blessed to know how much you love him, that you're willing to tell him, don't go that way because I have traveled it. And it's not good. And it's not good. Because a lot of those people that you be telling, they'll be just like, <laughs> like Zion, right? God is thinking, and now Zion comes in, and how many of us have probably said this or heard somebody say this, right? He said, but Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me, my Lord has forgotten me. Like, right? Because here, I'm telling you guys, like, God's good, and God's great, and God's doing this. But then just like Zion, just like Israel, sometimes you have in your heart, you're like, well, I wish that was true, but you don't know how hard it's going on for me. You don't, you don't know the struggle it is for me to wake up. You don't know what I'm going through. That's what Zion say to the Lord and to Isaiah. That's, that's what we're probably saying in 2023. The guy sometimes when we wake up is like, Lord, have you forgotten me? Have, have, you, have, you, have you just like decided that I, I, I'm nowhere, that, that I'm not important? And I'm here to tell you, like, no, you're very important. You're very important. Paul, he said, what are you talking about? He's like, I don't know. You didn't wake up thinking of me, but I woke up thinking of you. That, that's something to just be really excited about. That, that God that created the whole world, the whole universe, everything in it, says, I love you enough and I have not forgotten you and I have not forsaken you. He, he reminds us in verse 15, and then Isaiah 49, right? He says, you remind us, can a woman forget her nursing child that she should have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget. I don't know about you guys. That, that's Ben, by the way. He's so cute. Yeah, yeah. I was but, say. Hey, that, that's when he was nice. Now he's all. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but you know, like, I, I was just there. I mean, I was there, like, fully and everything. I was, I was involved. But, you know, I, I can't even imagine what that bond was between him and his mom. And I don't think she's ever going to forget his needs. He's going to place his needs above her needs every time, all the time. And it, but he reminds me that even if, like, by the off chance that they forget, because that's a hard sell, right? He's saying they would never forget. But even if they forget, God is saying, the Father in heaven is saying, I will not forget. Amen. I will not forget you. Amen. 
I don't know about you guys, but I, I felt like that's what I had to hear this 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 week. Hey, I think I need to hear that every day is that God God hasn't forgotten me. Because sometimes I mean I, I, I I'm exhausted. You guys may feel that way. Sometimes sometimes we're just tired. We're just well, wait, but we're just over it. <laughs> we're just over it. And God's just saying, oh, I haven't forgot you. He's like, your mom, who loves you so much, she loves you. Yeah, I love you more. And I'm not discrediting my mom. My mom loves me to death, but God loves me more. God loves you more. Everything take away from your parents. Your parents love you with every measure of their being, but God loves you more. Amen. And getting into uh, our verse where we got our our title from, right? In 16 of Isaiah 49, it says, Behold, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. He's saying, I am I'm constantly thinking of you because these hands made you. I know every hair on your head. I know every teardrop that's ever been shed. Yeah, that run. Way to be. <laughs> 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 but right, like, it's, 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 there's something about that. And I was just talking with my niece earlier, and, and and she was sad because she doesn't have her dad on this Father's Day. And I was reminding her that, like, I understand that the the scariness of forgetting. Like, I, like, I get nervous. I I, I rewatch my dad's uh, funeral video every Father's Day, and my wife asked me why. It's because I don't want to forget. Right, because life goes on, and there's so much more happening that you worry that you're going to lose someone's memory. And I'm here to tell you is that God's going to always find a way to let you know and remind you. It might be just maybe the way you're talking, and they're going to be like, "Man, you sound just like your dad." Right? Man, you when you you're doing exactly what Dad would have did, and you're just like, "Well, I forgot all about that." God will find a way to remind you because He knows you, and He knows what you need. He's always going to be looking at looking at you. I mean, how many times do we look at our hands? So COVID, when it happened, <laughs> right? When COVID happened, it was like, don't touch your face. <laughs> and I was like, who touches their face? Nobody touches their face. That's, that's a nonsense rule. And then all of a sudden, when I was aware of, like, how many, like, I, I was like, I touch my face. Like, <laughs> I was sitting on my hands trying to stop me from touching my face. Like, you don't realize how many times we look at our palms because it's just there. And God's saying, I'm always going to be aware of what you're going through and what you're doing. It's a good thing and a bad thing, right? Because if we ain't doing something we ain't supposed to, he's saying, I'm going to do. But he's saying, if you're doing what you're supposed to, I will be with you. And in Song of Solomon, right? In chapter 8, verse 6, it says, Put me over your heart and on your arm, never to be taken off. For love is as strong as death, jealousy as Hard as the grave, its bright light is like the light of fire and the very fire of the Lord. He's just saying, I and it is a Solomon talking to his bride. And if you guys don't know, it's great, great poetry. Like, you know, it's just beautiful. But it's this guy is just so in love with his bride. And I don't know if you guys know this, but we are his bride. We are God's bride. He is so in love with you that he's saying, I have not only put you on my hands, but I have placed you on my heart. Like, I mean, like if you were sold on how much Jesus loves you, I'm hoping I'm selling it because what, what, what he's saying, he's saying, not only are you written on my palms, but you're written on my heart today, church, because you're my bride. You're my bride, and I'll always remember you in your finest moments. Yeah. Right? I mean, I mean for, for husbands, right, it says we were to look at our brides where they are blameless. Why? Because that's how God looks at his bride. If he used to look at, right, if he's looking to your window, we might we might be caught where we don't want him to see what we're doing. But he's still saying, I love you. Just, just stop what you're doing. Just stop what you're doing because he's saying, it, my, my love for you burns bright. And, and, and it's all right. I'm just rhyming all the time. I don't know. Maybe I was watching too much of Sesame Street. But moving on. Your builders make haste, your destroyers, and those who laid you waste go out from you. And, and we'll, we'll get to lift up your eyes around and see they all gather. He, he kind of just keeps on going into because he wants to remind people. It's, like this is what I'm talking about, the bride, right? They all gather. They come to you. As I live, declares the Lord, you shall put them all on as an ornament. You shall bind them 
on as a bride does the same. You're going to be able to wear these afflictions if there may be afflictions. Maybe there's sufferings. Maybe whatever you're going through. He's saying when you overcome it, you're going to be able to wear them in a sense like a badge of honor where you're going to be able to say, look, I'm better because of what the Lord did in my life and he helped me carry through it. Amen. Because we are all going to face the trials and tribulations, church. Amen. It's not if, it's when. But when you do, I hope you know where to go for help. In Psalm 121, it, it writes it this way. I lift, this is uh, verses 1 and 2. I lift up my eyes to the hills from where does my help come. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and the earth. Hallelujah. And if you guys are facing anything, you guys have to do anything. If you guys are trying to accomplish something, just know where you need to go to for help. And don't be scared to ask for help. I know, I, again, I, I've used my life as an example. I have pride and I forget to ask for help. And then every time I fall flat on my face. It's, it's tough to ask for help. Because why? Because then now you're vulnerable. Now people know. Now it gets messy. But God's saying, it's okay. I can handle your mess. Don't stress, you know, like, be blessed. I said, oh, I'm all going. Good. And surely you're waste in your desolate places and your devastated land. He's saying, and surely all these things that you have been through, well, they'll be transformed. You'll be better. Like, yeah, like, I love it because he reminds us, like, it's like almost like Isaiah is talking to you, like, but, but the place is too narrow for me. To, like, I, I, I need help. And he's like, exactly, and I'm going to help you. He said, hey, tra travel with me, the narrow road, and, and I will bless you. I will carry you. Oh, you know, he's all, if I can carry you, I'll get my, uh, I'll get my daughters and sons to carry you on their shoulders if I have to. And Gabe carried Raquel in the church. And that's what I'm talking about. He said, but not only your brothers and sisters, he said, I'll have kings and queens foster you and love you. He's saying, why? Because I love you. In Psalm 72, 12, 14, I think this is the reason. For he delivers the needy, the needy when he calls, the poor and him who has no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence, he redeems their life, and precious is their blood in his sight. I love that because I don't, I don't know. If you need anything today, I'm telling you it's Jesus. Yes. Amen. If you're needy, he, he, he say, I will take care of you. If you need anything, I will bless you. And, and, I, and I went on a couple of tangents, so we're just going to go ahead and skip a little bit ahead. We're going to go right to, right to here. Because I want you guys all to stand up, and I want you guys to hear this part. Because if you got anything out of this message today, guys, is that just know that not only are you loved and cherished, but that God is all you need. Yes. And if you need anything else, well, you're just looking for the wrong thing. Then, 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 then you just need to redirect it to what you truly do. In 1 John 5, verses 1 through 5, it says, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. Thank you, church.
Thanks. Thank you, Mike, for the good message today. Yeah. Yeah. Miss it, but uh, it's working with kids, and they're doing good too. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lord, thank you so much for today. Thank you for everybody that showed up here. Thank you for the new faces. Thank you for the old faces, no pun intended. Thank you so much for all that you do in our lives. Everything that you give us, uh, I mean, just uh, waking up in the morning with that first breath and, and knowing that you're with us before our feet hit the ground is a blessing. And being able to walk with you, yes. being able to preach yes. to others about you, being able to talk and spread your love to others and give that hope to others. Because we know hope lies with you. And everything that we do, we give to you. We ask you to protect our families, our friends. We ask that fathers today feel special and have that special love from their children and other people in their lives. We ask that all the fathers in here are lifted up today uh, as we lift you up as the Most High Father. Thank you so much for all you do in our hearts and our lives. And I pray all these things in your son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Thank you. Thank you.